Lying at the high-altitude Qinghai-Tibet Plateau is Tibet Autonomous Region, the westernmost part of China. Once an ancient empire that ruled lands as far east as Chengdu, the Tibetan people have evolved to be the perfect inhabitants of this high-altitude plateau. Uniquely developed to survive and indeed thrive in this harsh environment, the hardy Tibetan people have lived for thousands of years in virtual seclusion, deliberately cut off from the Western world. Unique in their religious beliefs and culture, Tibetans are a devout people with a rich life in the pursuit of true enlightenment. While life can be harsh on the plateau, the Tibetan people have managed to find ways to survive that include the cultivation of a hardy highland barley and the domestication of the ever-present yaks, which roam the plains and prairies in herds, looked after by their nomadic herders. Tibetan people are the inhabitant of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, they are descended from the ancient Chiang people. More than 4,000 years ago, the ancestors of the Tibetan people flourished in the Brahmaputra Valley. Nowadays, the Tibetans mainly live in Tar, as well as surrounding Tibetan inhabitant areas in Sichuan Province, Gansu Province, Qinghai Province, and Yunnan Province. Like this mysterious land of Tibet, the Tibetan people who live here are also full of mystery. How do they manage to live at the highest average altitude in the world? What do they believe in? What is their food, clothing, and housing like? Please keep watching to find out more about Tibetan people. Who are Tibetans? Tibetans are an ethnic group of people that are native to Tibet, a region of China on the high-altitude Qinghai Tibet Plateau in the far west of China. Believed to be descended from the ancient Chiang people, a name given to various groups of people that have lived in the general area of ancient western China for thousands of years before the Chinese dynasties, the Tibetan people are among those that traditionally spoke a form of Tibeto-Burman languages. Modern Tibetans use a form of Sino-Tibetan languages, of which there are more than a dozen different dialects. It is widely believed that the modern Tibetan people are descended from the Zhang tribes around 15,000 years ago and may have combined with even earlier human residents of the plateau around 11,000 years ago, when the Sherpa people diverged from the Tibetans. However, in Tibetan mythology, it is believed that the people were born out of the marriage of the monkey, Fa Trelgan Changchup Sempa, and the rock ogress, Ma Drag Sinmo. Tibetans are a hugely devout people, with a strong belief in the Buddhist faith. This Buddhist religion, which was brought to Tibet in around the 7th century, has integrated into the ancient Tibetan culture to become a unique cultural religion that is found only on the plateau area of Tibet, Sichuan, Qinghai, and Yunnan provinces. What are the traditional clothes Tibetan people wear? Tibetan dress is very distinctive. Even now, Tibetans wear traditional Tibetan clothing daily. Tibetan farmers often wear a dark brown or gray robe made of pulu, a woolen fabric. Urban residents like businessmen, government officials, and handicraftsmen pay more attention to their dressing. Males usually wear cotton or silk shirt in their robes. Poor or rich, they'll put a piece of turquoise on the right ear to show their elegance. Upon the arrival of Tibetan festivals, females in the urban area would dress in brocade clothes and rainbow aprons. In addition to clothing, Tibetans also have a preference for accessories. Both men and women wear necklaces, rings, and other accessories. In different Tibetan inhabitant areas, Tibetans also wear slightly different clothing and hair accessories. If you take an overland tour to Tibet, especially an overland tour from Sichuan to Tibet, you can pay attention to the different costumes worn by the people in the different Tibetan areas along the Sichuan-Tibet Highway. Traditional Lifestyle of Tibetans The Tibetan people are warm and hospitable, with a friendly, outgoing nature, and the ability to laugh in the face of hardship. Not only have the people managed to survive in the extremely harsh environment of the Tibetan plateau, they have thrived in it, and have even built a huge empire that once expanded into what is now major parts of China. Traditionally, Tibetans are mainly a nomadic people, living on the grasslands and prairies of the plateau in large tents known as yurts, following the green pastures with their livestock as the seasons change. In other parts of the plateau, wooden and stone houses, covered in Buddhist symbols and decorated with bright colors, can be found, a testament to the ancient Tibetan Empire brought about by the Tibetan king, Trisong Detsen. 
What do Tibetan people eat? The Tibetan diet is heavily influenced by the environment of the Tibetan plateau. Due to the harsh natural environment, vegetables and fruits are scarce in Tibet, and the staple food is mainly barley from the plateau. Other foods are mainly beef, lamb, and dairy products. Tibetan specialties include sampa, ghee tea, and air-dried beef and mutton. In particular, Tibetan butter tea, a drink made from a mixture of yak butter, milk, and tea, provides Tibetans with the energy they need for daily life, while the oil contained in ghee tea also protects the lips from cracking caused by the dryness of the highland climate. Farming of Tibetans. With very limited arable land suitable for agriculture, subsistence agriculture is the primary form of farming. Livestock such as sheep, yaks, and goats are the main type of farming, and the farmers are nomadic, traveling across the plains with their herds, following the lush grass to get the best grazing for their animals. The movement across the plains is a natural form of environmental farming, allowing pastures that have been used to rest and regain their fertility before being used again in later years. Arable farmland only accounts for around 2% of the total area of Tibet and supplies the grains essential for everyday life on the plateau. In this fragile environment, hardy crops are needed, as even the lowest arable lands in the east of Tibet are much higher than the highest farmlands in other countries. Rotation of crops, fallow periods, and crop mixing allow the farmers to maintain a sustainable arable farming system in a limited growing season. Trading of Tibetans In Tibet, trade has been a major industry for thousands of years, from the days of the ancient tea horse road and the salt trade route to more modern types of trading. Evidence exists of Tibetan trade since before the 7th century, both on and off the plateau region, and the export of raw materials such as salt, borax, herbs, and gemstones has been going on between Tibet and Nepal, India, and inland China for over 1,500 years. Exports were traditionally traded for items that could not be produced on the plateau, such as silk, paper, ink, tea, and iron and steel products and many food items are traded under agreements with Nepal and India. Tibetan Idea of Death and Reincarnation Death and reincarnation hold significant importance in Tibetan Buddhism, and the Tibetan people all believe devoutly that they will one day achieve enlightenment and rise to a higher plane of existence. Tibetan Buddhists believe that there are two kinds of reincarnation. The first is the involuntary incarnation, where karma holds sway and draws you back to a new life, often caused by destructive desires and emotions. The second is by voluntary means, where through the power of prayer and compassion that has benefit to others, they can choose the time and place of their rebirth, as well as choosing who their parents will be. People known as Tulkus do this second form of reincarnation, and for over 900 years, the people have believed that a realized soul can choose the circumstances of their rebirth in order to best benefit mankind and ensure continuity of their spiritual journey to true enlightenment. The most famous reincarnations in Tibet are those of the highest-ranking Lama, the head of Tibetan Buddhism, and the Panchen Lama, Tibet's second highest incarnate. Both of these religious figureheads have been reincarnated several times, and each time one dies, signs are read to determine the location of the rebirth of the Lama. Once located, they are taken into the monasteries to begin their journey to becoming the Lama. What religion do Tibetan people believe in? Most Tibetan believe in Tibetan Buddhism, and some believe in the old Bon. All the Tibetan people can't live without three mascots, that is, Buddha, Buddhist teachings, and Tibetan monks, Lamas, which are believed to bring them blessing and harmony. They also hold that Mount Kailash is the center of the world, and all the lives are circling the carriers of holiness, and those sacred carries can be mountains, lakes, stupas, temples, etc. That's the reason why you can see many pilgrims prostrating in front of Jokong Monastery and circumambulating it day and night. Religious Life Pilgrimage In Tibetan Buddhism, a pilgrimage is a life-changing journey that one takes to seek out enlightenment, often in some sacred place such as a temple or holy mountain. The Tibetan word for pilgrim is nas skor ba, or one who circles a sacred place, and the kora, a religious circling of a sacred site, is a major part of the pilgrim's journey.
This rite performed at the end of the journey is what defines the pilgrimage. Many pilgrims travel to the place of worship on foot, and some by prostration, though it is not a requirement. One can travel on horseback or by car, as long as one performs the ritual kora on foot only. In Tibetan Buddhism, it is believed that the merit accrued by performing the kora is less if done on horseback than when done walking. Ancient Tibetan Buddhists would make the long journeys to India to receive teaching of Buddhism and to visit the sacred Buddhist sites. Nepal has also long been a place of pilgrimage for Tibetan Buddhists, in such places as the Buddhanath Stupa and Lumbini, the sacred birthplace of Siddhartha Gautama, the first Buddha, in 623 BC. In Tibet, pilgrimage sites include the famous Jokhang Temple in Lhasa, one of the oldest Buddhist sites in Tibet that dates back to the 7th century, and the sacred Mount Kailash in Nungari Prefecture of Western Tibet, which is believed to be Mount Meru, the center of the universe, in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Bon. Jokhang Temple has long been the favored pilgrimage destination of Tibetans traveling to Lhasa, to pray in prostration before the gates of the temple and perform the holy kora around the temple, which follows the path of the famed Barkor Street, the center of shopping in Lhasa, with hundreds of vendors selling almost anything you could imagine from Tibet. Tibetan Men and Women The roles of men and women in Tibetan society has been a stable one for thousands of years, with the women taking care of the home and their husbands, and looking after the children, cooking, and doing minor work in the fields and nomadic villages. The men take a more dominant role in this ancient patriarchal society, working with the livestock or crops to provide for their families. While there have been some changes in the roles of women in modern Tibetan society, this is still subject to certain expected roles and the main role of women being set in stone. Women can inherit property in Tibet, unlike in many countries where they have fewer rights and domesticated roles. However, when the woman gets married, her status reverts to that of the wife, and the role is lessened. One thing that should be remembered in Tibetan society, though, is that women have an inordinate amount of power within the family unit. In families that practice polyandry, which is still legal in Tibet, the woman's task is that of balancing the family and her multiple husbands. With multiple husbands, the woman can choose who she wants the father of her baby to be, or she can decide not to name anyone to keep the family peaceful and remove possible jealously between the husbands. In the modern Tibetan women, while they often still take on the role of wife once they are married, while younger, they are less subservient to men and more open in voicing their opinions of things in everyday life and trying to improve the status of women in Tibetan life. How about the nomad living in Tibet? The Tibetan nomad is one of the major groups of people living in the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. The living style of Tibetan nomads haven't changed a lot since the kingdom of Songsen Gampo in the 7th century. They lead a nomadic life in northern Tibet, wearing Tibetan leather robes, living in Tibetan nomadic tents, and herding yaks, sheep, and horses. Their tanned skin, strong physique, and noble manner remind tourists of American Indians. Women in the grazing area usually comb their hair into many small plaits, then bundle them into a larger braid hanging after necks, and decorate with colored stones. Some of them also cover their hair with a big patch of cloth sewn on copper coins and shells. Every step they take, all the decorations clink together. As winter sets in Tibet, they head down to the valley of Yarlung Zangbo River and exchange for daily necessities like tea, barley, etc. With the first ray of spring, all the families move back to the north again. Many Tibetan nomads have never been to the towns until their death. Tibetan names. Names and the rules of giving names are different from one culture to another. Traveling in Tibet, you'll certainly come across different Tibetan names. And you'll find the Tibetan names quite different from yours. Here, I'd like to talk about something about the Tibetan names. Originally, the Tibetans didn't have family names, and they only have second names, which usually consist of four words, such as Zha Shi Duo Jie. In the matriarchal society, the Tibetans were given names consisting one word of their mothers. For instance, the mother's name is Dalao Ga Mu. Then, her son's name can be Da Chi. 
At that time, there was no such thing as family name. However, family name appeared along with the coming of social classes. The high-class people used their family's name as their own first name, and thus, family name appeared. Later, Songsen Gampo, it was he who ordered to build the Patala Palace, established his own kingdom in Tibet, and gave lands and territories to his cadres. And these cadres began to add their lands' names before their names as their first names. So did their future generations, for those lands and territories are hereditary. Buddhism has prevailed in Tibet since the 7th century, and the Tibetan people began to ask for a name from the living Buddha. Some rich people often take their children to the living Buddha with some presents and ask for a name for their children. And the living Buddha shall say some blessing words to the child and then give him a name after a small ceremony. If one wants to be a Lama, then no matter how old he is, he shall be given a new religious name, and his old name shall not be used any longer. Usually, the living Buddha shall give part of his own name to the ordinary Lamas to make a new name for them in the monasteries. For example, if the living Buddha's name is Jiang Bai Ping Kuo, then the religious name he gives to the ordinary Lama can be Jiang Bai Duo Ji or Jiang Bai Wang Dui. For the common Tibetans, they still have no family names, and they usually give their children names embodying their own wishes or blessings towards them. Besides, the Tibetan names can be something on the earth, or the date of one's birthday. Today, most of the Tibetan names still consist of four words, but for the convenience, they are usually shortened as two words, the first two words or the last two, or the first and the third, but no Tibetans use a connection of the second and the fourth words as their shortened names. Some Tibetan names only consist of two words or even one word only, for example, Ga, 